Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 69 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Intervention. This is a case highlighting potential challenges with engaging the coronary arteries using radial axis. This was a patient in whom a right radial axis was used. However, there was significant difficulty advancing the guide wire into the ascending aorta. After several attempts, a picture was taken with the injection of the contrast through the catheter. And based on this image, what is the diagnosis? A. Subclavian occlusion. B. Subclavian tortuosity. C. Scimitar. And D. Arteria lusoria. Scimitar syndrome, option C, is actually a rare congenital pulmonary syndrome in which the pulmonary vein goes into the systemic vein, the inferior vena cava, and it appears on the chest x-ray like a scimitar, which is a curved sword. So clearly this has nothing to do with radial axis. However, what we're seeing here is a case of arterial lusoria. We're seeing that there is a smooth border, there is the vessel continues towards the right. Instead of going straight down, it continues towards the right. If the subclavian was occluded, would he would have seen a stump and we don't really see any subclavian tortuosity. So this is an example of arterial lusoria, which essentially it's um, an origin of the right subclavian artery. Instead of coming from the brachiocephalic, it comes from the aortic arch distal to the takeoff of the left uh, subclavian artery. The challenge with this is, apart from engaging use radial axis, is that sometimes it can uh, create compression of the esophagus or the trachea, causing dysphagia or recurrent pharyngeal nerve pulsing. So what is the next step now? A. Convert to femoral. B. Use left radial. C. Attempt to engage. Or D. Any of the above. And the answer here is any of the above. We do know that arterial lusoria makes it much harder to engage, so converting to femoral or to left radial is perfectly appropriate, especially in cases where there is an urgency, for example in the setting of ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. However, sometimes one can use catheters and engage the coronaries even through this arterial lusoria, and this is actually what was attempted in our case. This is the glide wire that goes around and then enters into the ascending aorta all the way down to the coronary cusps. We advanced uh, our JL4 catheter all the way down. Uh, however, the catheter uh, could not really reach all the way to the left coronary ostium. So what would be the best next step? A. Convert to femoral axis. B. Use left radial. Uh, C. Multipurpose or D, use a 125 centimeter catheter. And one could argue that any of those could potentially work. In this particular case, the issue was the catheter length. Uh, the catheter was simply not long enough to reach all the way to the coronary ostia. And that is why we used a 125 centimeter JL5 catheter. And this was long enough to successfully deliver all the way to the coronary cusps and into the left main and then angiography was successfully performed. Fortunately, there was no significant disease, so there was no need for percutaneous coronary intervention. And the same thing, using a 125 cm JR4 catheter was used for engaging the right coronary artery. You can see a fairly significant bend, but eventually the artery was engaged and coronary angiography did not show any significant disease. So several lessons from this case. The first one is uh, uh, the presence of arterial lusoria. This is one of the potential causes of uh, difficulty engaging the coronaries from right radial axis. Of note, this is not a problem from left. This is specific for the right subclavian artery. So one of the solutions is going to the left radial or femoral. Another solution, however, is to use a long catheter and engage the coronary artery. One can actually even do PCI through an arterial lusoria. Thank you.